So I'm looking at the Peterson graph in this video, and that is this graph right here. What we're first going to do is to find a Hamilton path in the Peterson graph, and then prove that the Peterson graph has no Hamilton cycle. So if you have not already done so, please pause the video and find a Hamilton path for yourself. Now I'm going to go ahead and show you, I mean there, there's a de several different ways to do this, but the easiest way I think is to just take four of the edges of the outer cycle, so we start somewhere, go along four of the edges, then cross into the inner five cycle, and follow that until we've completed four of those edges and we end here. So we just started here and ended here. We've covered all of the vertices of the graph with this path, so this is a Hamilton path. So that part is easy enough. Now, in order to prove that the Peterson graph has no Hamilton cycle, we'll take um, a clever argument to do this, and the first thing is to observe that the Peterson graph has no cycle of on less than or equal to four vertices. So observe the Peterson graph has no cycle on less than or equal to four vertices. We can take a look at the Peterson graph and certainly find many cycles which have length five, but there is no cycle on three vertices or four vertices. So we'll use this fact to help us prove that the Peterson graph has no Hamilton cycle. So I'll just scroll down here so we can just see the, Ham the Peterson graph. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to prove this by contradiction. So proof by contradiction. And that means that we will suppose there is a Hamilton cycle and derive a contradiction. So we suppose that we have a Hamilton cycle and let's call it C. So C is a Hamilton cycle of the Peterson graph. Well, what does the Peterson graph look like? It has a total of 10 vertices and it has a total of 15 edges. So we know that 10 of the edges have been used up in this 10 cycle. This C is a 10 cycle. And so the graph is going to look like this 10 cycle plus five other edges. There's no other vertices. So here's the 10 cycle C, which I've labeled with vertices V1 to V10 for convenience. And it's important to realize that the Peterson graph has originally 15 edges. So 15 edges total. So what we know is that the Peterson graph consists of this 10 cycle, which we've labeled V1 to V10, together with five chord edges. And a chord edge is any, ver any edge that connects a vertex in the cycle with another vertex in the cycle which were not already adjacent in the cycle. So for example, something like this would be a chord. Now, I'm going to show you that not every chord could go directly across. So if it was the case that every chord was to go directly across to an opposite side, directly opposite, in other words, V1 would be adjacent to V6 here, um, five vertices away. If that was the case, that every vertex was adjacent to an opposite in its chord, so like something like this, well, then we have the existence of four cycles. It's pretty easy to find one. If you take a look, I'll just draw it in yellow, we would have something like this. So that means that if each chord joins vertices opposite on the cycle C, then there exists a four cycle. Here it is drawn in yellow. And that's a contradiction because we know that in the Peterson graph there are no cycles of length three or four. The first cycle you get has length five. So let's take a look at what chords could be possible. So here we have the ten cycle again. And if we just think about the vertex V1, and we consider what chord is going to be incident with it, because we know that every vertex in the Peterson graph has degree 3. So right now, V1 only has degree 2. There's definitely a chord incident with this vertex. Now, if it was to be incident with vertex V3, we would have just created a 3 cycle. And that's not the case. So that cannot be. If it was incident with V4, then we would have created a 4 cycle. And that is also a contradiction. The same thing is going to happen if it was incident with V9 or V8. So what we have is it could be incident with V5 or V6. And not only that, 
we have just observed that not every chord is going to be able to connect opposite sides. So here V1 to V6 would be one of those that connects opposites. So what we're going to do is we're going to suppose that this is the chord which is not um, connecting opposites. So we're going to say that V1, V5 is a chord. So in other words, that is an edge. Another way of saying this same thing is there is a chord that joins vertices at distance less than 5. That was because we know they are not all at distance 5. And these vertices must be at distance 4 because we eliminated the case of them being at distance 2 or distance 3. Both of those are impossible. So since we know that there is a chord between a pair of vertices at distance 4, we can say without loss of generality that that is this particular chord from V1 to V5. Let's just put that. This means without loss of generality, we will say that V1, V5 is that chord, which connects vertices at distance 4 in C. Well, you might be surprised to find out that we are actually almost done. If we take a look now at vertex V6, we can argue that vertex V6 must also be incident with one of the chords, because it must have degree 3 in the final Peterson graph. However, if we take a look at every possible chord option, we will see that they're each impossible. So let's do that one at a time. First of all, the chord options have to be at least distance 2 away, and we've already eliminated this type of case. If it was distance 2, we would have created a 3 cycle, and that's impossible. Similarly, this chord is impossible because it creates a 4 cycle. And on the same thing on the other side, this chord is impossible, and this chord is impossible. That leaves us only with two options. Either V6 is adjacent to V10, like this, or V6 is adjacent to V2. But let's take a look at each of those cases. If V6, V10 is the chord, then we have a 4 cycle, which goes V5, V6, V10, V1. And that's a contradiction. Similarly, if we were to not have that, but to have V6, V2 as a chord, it would again have a 4 cycle, and it is formed between V1, V2, V6, V5, and back. So in either case, we form a 4 cycle, and that's again a contradiction. So we know that V6 cannot be incident with any chord edge without making a cycle of length less than or equal to 4. And that right there is a contradiction, because we know we cannot have cycles of length less than 4, less than or equal to 4, and also we know that vertex V6 in particular has to have degree 3, like all the other vertices. So that completes the proof. Why does it work? It's because we supposed that there was a Hamilton cycle in the Peterson graph, and then we derived a contradiction. So we can conclude by saying that the Peterson graph is not, is not Hamiltonian. It means it does not have a Hamilton cycle, even though it has a Hamilton path.